All right, I, I guess. Isn't this the raiding one? Because I have done this quite a lot, and pretty often we would fail, so... Ugh. But anyways, welcome guys. This is the Afterthought for G2 storyline. I'm going to try to focus and talk at the same time, but... I'm not sure <laughs> if I'll be able to. Although, hopefully he does the heavy lifting and I won't have to do a lot or too much. Hey, I got a kill. Alright, let's do some buff. Ooh, a crit. Are, are you serious? Alright, good thing I have this. Do it again. No crit buff. That sucks. Alright, so we started G2 with what did we know at the time? I believe that, um, yeah, it was the end of G1. We're supposed to become a Knight of Light, a Paladin, so we can help Morgan defend the middle Eren from the invasion of Psycho and his Psycho minions and the Dark Knights. Which is kind of spoilers for the end of G2. But yeah, that's pretty much from that. That was pretty much the main goal is to become a paladin. So we took it literally as to become a paladin. Like, sorry to explain. Pretty sure my character thought as, oh, so I just need to become a paladin. So I joined the the main castle guard people to become like the so-called paladins but they're not true paladins they're like fake poser paladins pretty terrible paladins too because they were we find out that they were being manipulated from behind the scenes from the prime minister Ezras who was well the prime minister of the Ime Maka and the King Rian, or Ryan, whatever his name was, Rory's little brother, who found out also found out that he's not a country bunkin' warrior, he was a royalty. But he didn't choose to become a he didn't want to become a king. Cause he um what's the word? Oh, he found out he had a higher calling to rescue the goddess Morrigan. So he left out on that journey left his brother and did not think to hey maybe once in a while I should pop back in check up on if my little brother who's like 10 years old or 8 or something at that time is doing okay like at that point or moment he should be like well we are royalty and there's always uh, like the chance that some bad people may just like wrap their way in and manipulate what's happening or circumstances of corruption and my brother's like only eight years old so I should like be there for him when he needs me I mean he literally told him Ryan Ryan don't worry no matter what happens wherever you are I will always be here when you need me bro you didn't even pop in like how long was that journey well to be fair maybe I'm just jumping the horse again Maybe after Rauri left. Uh, let me think. After Rauri left, he went on his journey right away. Things were still pretty good at that time. But then I'm assuming several months passed. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, uh -oh. oh we did. We lost. See? This is why I asked if you're sure. Because my scrub ass can't do anything about this. I'm like 6k total. I don't have Hellstorm or Thunder or Fireball or any of that fancy nonsense. I just have a bow and a giant sword, which I should probably final hit, but I don't think they're gonna give me a chance to switch weapon because I'm dying. 
What the? We won? Oh my god. OMG. What was I saying? Oh yeah, so... Party took several months of Raori exploring and... Trying to save Morgan on any clues they could get. And... So at that time, it was probably good for Ian. Like, uh, the corruption wasn't showing or anything. And he still trusted, um... Ezra's... Es oh, whatever. But then, um... The... I believe it's called the Tragedy of Imei Maka when they were being attacked by formers. Or... Were, were they being attacked by formers or was it by other humans? Thanks. He really did it and I was... Didn't think he could. So... During the tragedy, we found out that um, Rian was killed. I'm not sure if it was mainly by Red Dyer or was it an accident or something, but she did say by his sword. Like, does she literally mean by his sword? So I'm saying like all this is happening probably after a more after Raori and the the squad found out that they were being betrayed by Morrigan, the fake Morrigan at that time. So then they got knocked out and went into a deep slumber. Morgan was impressed by Raori's noble sacrifice in trying to save Mari. So he saved Raori. Probably saw potential in him to become a Dark Knight. But yeah, so during that time when he was asleep, he was probably, they said he slept for several years, if I'm not wrong. Let me check my notes. Um, yeah, Raori hasn't been asleep for multiple years, so that's, that might have more or less happened during his slumber that the tragedy happened, so when she noticed that uh, Rian was dying or on death's bed at that moment, she was probably like, this is my chance, I could do this now. But that seems kind of out out, out of here because she did mention well Red Dyer and I believe Dilly's mention about the potion they found in her cabinet which was unguarded unprotected for some reason I have no idea why because when we popped up in Barry Dungeon she was like what you're here it wasn't like haha you're here I've been expecting you muhahaha so she didn't see it coming Unless it was, then it wasn't portrayed in the story. But anyways. But yeah, it was a Sedata, and they said... No, it was a marionette potion. Used to control a person. And they, but she said it takes quite a lot of preparation for it to be done. For the person to be constantly sedated. So... Either he, after being killed, quote-unquote... He was still alive-ish? Or he's been sedated pre before the tragedy, and then she used the potion brainwashed them. Oh, uh, wasn't this guy the guy who usually here do dailies? I, I I know there's always some beginner giant that always like waits around or something. I think or or did he only popped up during the um, billionaire for the thing? But yeah, so he was being controlled. Just so for quite a while, maybe a few years actually, Ezra's was controlling or manipulating Emei Maka's resources behind the scenes. Especially sending the paladins off to clear the mines so she can retrieve gold. At first I thought it was the legendary Mithril Org or something that they used in G1 to coat Glass's bones. So he can be res more resistant to magic or it was something like that, I believe. But no, it was actually gold, so she can inscribe gold onto the golem. I believe well I don't believe. I'm not sure. It didn't they didn't really specify why she needed gold for the golem, I think, maybe. Yo, I got I think it was just a summoning to summon Tapatatas.
Yeah. I believe it was through Summer Tapatatas. So she needed the gold, which she was mining. Thanks to the Paladin. So after that, uh, then she started working, practicing her magic on the CEO golems. Seeing if she can summon. Are you here to help? Question mark. No. All right. So I'll just go. Oh, uh, what was I gonna say? Yeah. So she was working on. Just working up the CEO golem, and what Sim has told us that either something really extremely powerful, former, woke them. I mean, they all reacted to a powerful former, or someone's been practicing waking them up. So, which we found out Ezra was doing the latter, so she can wake up Tapatatas. The uh, ancient wisdom, which was not really wisdom -y, unless he talked or share his knowledgeable wisdom. He seems more like an ancient weapon. But hey, who am I? Okay, so I usually do this when I go into this, just hit all the orbs and then just come back and do them. So yeah, found that that was her plan. The paladin, we. We joined the Paladin. I'm sorry about my afterthoughts. They're usually scramble ups. I don't really script them or anything. I just kind of have like an outline of what to talk about. Not all of the stuff usually though. Because I usually miss some stuff. Um, but yeah, so we joined the Paladin. So we had to do her errands for her. The gold, clearing mines, stuff, yada yada. So we did that. And then we did some shady stuff when she sent us to go deal with um, formers pretending to be humans in math dungeon, which turns out it was Triana, who's a five, eight, ten year old girl who was taking care of Raori's unconscious coma body at the time because she wanted a friend. She felt lonely. Raori, being a asshole that he is. Diffuser because she was a former. I mean, if you ask me, I can't tell the difference. So she has intelligence. She's human-like. I mean, shouldn't you wait before you jump? But that's me. I jump to everything. But yeah, so he kept refusing her. Morgan gave him the talk about how his brother was being manipulated and controlled. Raori was like, "No way! The Prime Minister is a good person. She would never do such a thing like that." Well, it turns out he was wrong. But yeah, so Rory after that, oh, Morgan also said, if you leave here, I cannot guarantee that you'll be alive. So he's like, F that, and he still left. I can race crash shot. So close to rank five. So he's like, F that, and he left. Triana's like, no, please don't leave. I'm lonely. I need a friend. I need someone. Oh, windmill. Come on. Thank, thank you. So she followed after him. But then... Rory's like, don't follow me. If I can protect myself, I can protect you. Therefore, you shouldn't be with me. And then she's like, really? Does it have to be that way? So then she left and I, and I mentioned a, quite a few, oh, a bit that I believe during this generation, I say I believe a lot, they discovered the power of slow-mo because they use it quite a lot. All right, let me, oh no, wrong skill. It was supposed to be lullaby. Um. Hmm. Is it only swords that when you windmill them, they stay in one place? Oh, come on. But yes, uh, at this time, I, I found... I wasn't... Yeah, I'm stuttering. At this time, they started practicing slow-mo, so they were using it a lot. And so she started running back really slowly. I didn't want to skip the scenes because I'm not sure if there was going to be any dialogue or lore or anything. So I just let it play it out. And there was a dialogue at the end. It's just Raul being like, I'm sorry, I have to do this. I can't protect you. So I guess he somewhat does care in his own kind of asshole way. But yeah, she went back. And then at the time, us, 
and the squaddy paladin train he met was searching math, so we found Triana. And sadly, due to the plot, my character was forced against his will to fight Triana. So was the knights. Hopefully she didn't die. I mean, that ending cutscene didn't look like she died because she was holding hands and standing upright. But yeah. So Raori came back and fought us off. I just let the trainee die as I sat in the corner because F them. Hurting a little girl. I mean, she was unarmed. We should have let her explain herself before, you know. But yeah, he came back, whooped their ass. And then, as you know, we had, we got back up. Uh, Raul tried to explain himself during, at the current moment, but... Ezra spread this giant lie that there was a imposter dupp doppelganger pretending to be Raori. As... She was... What's the phrase for this? Um... What is the phrase for this? Covering the background? Or covering her corner? What's the phrase? Covering her edges? It's covering something, right? Wh whatever, she was just making sure all her corners and holes was... Oh. All her... Exp no. Everything I'm trying to say sounds really lewd. She was making sure her plan has no dead weight? Uh, no, that's not the... Whatever, you guys know what I mean. I'm making sure her plan was there was, there was no open air exposed area that could ruin it. Is, is what I'm trying to say, but I just can't figure out the phrase for it. Oh, dude, come on. I wish you would play faster. Don't hit me. Thank you. Um, yeah, so she spread a long time ago that there was a doppelganger pretending to be Raori. That way, if he ever does show up, they will, he will be killed on the spot, so he, will, he wouldn't challenge her reign or figure out that um, Rion was being manipulated. So yeah, so she, a priest, two knights, and Craig showed up. Raori tried to explain himself, but he couldn't. Because they all believe in a doppelganger and they say, oh, we can't tell the difference. So they all fought, try to fight him. But Raori, being the experienced warrior he is, beat their ass. But then Ezra has pulled the, oh, I have a hostage thing with Triana. Bro, but hold up. If my leader did that, you should be questioning it at that moment. Craig should have been like, what the f are you doing? I... He's a freaking paladin. Aren't paladins supposed to be self... Not self-righteous. Righteous holy knights. Doing the good. And all this. Like, the fact that he didn't react to it. Or make any kind of comment. Means how trashy the paladins of Ime Makas are. Or how corrupted they are. They are. Unless he didn't really care because she was a former at that point. He's a piece of shit. Really. So. But yeah. He let it happen. He didn't say anything. And then she's like, stand down, Rowery, or I'll blast her and kill her. Rowery stood down. He, she still blasted her. Morgan popped in and was like, No. Although he seems to care about more Ra about Raori than Triana, you get to ask me. But yeah, he took them, dipped out. He gave Raori the talk. Wow, Triana was laying on the ground, needing first aid or help of any kind, healing because unless that was done off screen, because I didn't get any, any, any indication that it was. But that's a really shitty thing to do, Morgan. That was your daughter, right? Or whoever he is to her. Unless that's the uh, former daughter that Red Dyer was talking about. Wait. Could it be that Red Dyer and Morgan actually know each other? Maybe after the whole situation, he handed off 
this former daughter that he adopted off to Morgan to take care of maybe I don't know because that does bring up like they she did mention it so whatever happened to her I it's either Triana or Triana because yeah could be Triana wait maybe Triana is Mari's husk of a body without her soul because her soul is in Nao's body and so if Raori's been asleep for several years maybe Mari's body been asleep for several years and then Red Dyer found it and then he raised it as a daughter yeah found her and raised her as a daughter all this time but then situation in start happening he's being framed blamed for all this stuff by the corruption of Ezra's so he thought the only safe thing that he could do was hand Triana over to Morgan because he felt like she'll be safer there so it's a mutual thing like even though he didn't like Morgan but it was for the better safety of her so he did it maybe that's what happened and that's his daughter so that could be but yeah because we still have that open-ended Morgan giving yeah not providing first aid to Triana who's dying on the ground like he was giving him this whole entire monologue come on I'm a bit I'm so distracted talking down for game that I have arrow revolver all right but yeah after that, we quit the Paladin, because it was a really scummy thing to do. And then we talked to Nellie's to figure out how to become a true Paladin. And then he redirected us to Red Dyer, who's like, I'm not, well, Price. He was like, oh, I know how you become a Paladin, or... Yeah. Right? Was it him who told us how? And then Tarlac... No, he told us to go meet Tarlac. Tarlac told us how. By explaining how Lou, the Knight of Light, had the three blessings. Human, gods, and spirit. And that he had this armor that allowed him to become a paladin. So then we follow in that clue, which led us... Yeah, led us to Ur. Because Tarlac mentioned we already had Morgan's blessing and... The blessing of human, of having choices or decision making. So then we went to Ur to get her blessing to become a spirit. But she said, oh, you need my help? Uh, you have to do, you have to scratch my back and I'll scratch your back. So I want you to do this ideal look. I want it to be the ideal look for, so people will stop throwing rocks at me and start hating me. So we have to do that, Aaron. And I was loathing the idea of having to do it because it was horrible. It was like 12 players having to find. But no, they made it easier in all those like four NPCs that you can just do now. One for every town. So that's pretty easy. So yeah, we did that. We found the ideal look for everyone. Or well, for the four people. Um, Yeah, we went back to Ur and then Ur is like, oh, okay. And then she's like, oh, I still want to know Nelly's. And then Nelly's like, oh, explained it to her. Like, this is what actually happened and I'm sorry. So then she's like, oh. So then she gave her her blessing and was like, oh, so in order for me to imbue all three, you have to go make this armor. But first, you gotta find Emmanuel. So she sent us to Eder with a note. And Eder gave us a pass to go to the Mithril Mines to find the um, manual and the Mine for Mithril Org. So we found that, went back to Eater, and Eater's like, if you really are deserving of this, I hope it helps you well. So then he did make the armor, so then we went back to Ur, got her blessing, infused all three into the armor, and then she said, then we just need to pass the trial thing. So then we went to Sierra, did the wolf trial, with an insanely long slow-mo cutscene that they kept doing for some reason. I don't know why, as usual, I thought it was a dialogue. But then I felt like it was going too long. I was like, oh no, should I skip it? Should I not? But I was like, no, I'm too committed. I'm too deep to pull, pull out. So I just let it run its course. And of course, at the end, there was some dialogue. It, it wasn't much. 
But yeah, we did the wolf trial. I did it easy peasy. And then after that, we continue on back to Price. Tell him we got the armor and that we also found all this stuff. Price also did some digging background in the background. So he found the cabinet full of the notes up between Ezra's and her loyal, devoted assassin, sabotager, saboteur, whatever. So he did all the stuff. He used the heroine's feeling for Red, Price, Red Dyer to get, to get them distracted during the coup. So then she could kill all those people that needed to be killed, all the rats, anyone else that could thought her plan. And yeah, she did it. And then to tie up loose ends, she killed the, her loyal devoted devotee. And yeah, so then we found them. But then this is what, then we went with Price to Dilly to find out about what the potion was. Where's my chair? Oh, this is recording or I'll be really livid because then there's gonna be no no afterthoughts for it, for this but yeah but then we found out her, her plan we're trying to take over oh. um yeah then after that we just went with him to bury his mind where we found Ezra's she has summoned her mighty golden tapatatas we defeated the golem by saving price and becoming the knight of light she was really dumbfounded and was really expect us to become a paladin. But I mean, she was like, no, it's impossible. I was like, my glowy armor seems to disagree because I am a paladin. But yeah, after we defeat Tapatitas, Morgan and Raori showed up because we found out that the paladin was being powered by Rion, by Raori's little younger brother, Rion, who was already dead. So, and then Raori questions like, who did this, who did this? And Ezra was like, he did it. He did this all. He was scheming, uh, he was scheming all this plan. I tried, I tried to do the best of my ability to help Rion, but I couldn't. So, Raori instantly believed that and did not question anything about it. And then he's like, I will remember you forever. I'll have my vengeance and I'm hoping he won't. But Morgan was like, yes tap into your dark side let it burn I'll teach you the ways to become a dark knight you'll be the strongest dark knight of them all but yeah that happened and then they dipped out and then Ezra was like oh no it's just me and Red Dyer and the paladin and then Red Dyer was like what did you do my, to my lord he's like well he's been dead this entire time what as Red Dyer went Yes, during the tragedy of Yemen Maka, your sword was the one that ended him. I was merely controlling him this entire time, and I was the true ruler of Yemen Maka. Oh wait, yeah, but then Red Dad mentioned, you're a necromancer. You're a necromancer this entire time, you weren't no druid. So yeah, that's, so she, he did die. So that's how, he didn't need to be sedated because he was already a zombie. Which I threw, it was a throwaway line at the, at the beginning that I mentioned. And I was, turns out I was right. But yeah, that's how he was going using the marionette to control the zombie body. So he had no free will. Yeah, so that's how she did it. So it means it happened after the tragedy. Maybe she was a good person before, but... I highly doubt it, but... But yeah, she was a necromancer. She summoned, then she summoned a bunch of scullies. And I was like, I'll handle this red dire. But yeah. And it was the part that was pretty hype for me because before this episode, it was a Sunday, so they gave us 10 gym box. I managed to get my spirit weapon to 21. So yeah, I was farming that in the dungeon. Off screen. In between the final floor. So at the end, I was just yelling, Excalibur! Charging at her. And it didn't really show the animation for it because I was hoping it would, but it didn't. And then it just cut to her fading. So do people in this world, when they die, they just fade from existence? Or something? If that's true, then I'm guessing she got to Rion's body before he face started dissipating. But yeah, but that happened. Um, 
after that, we got a bunch of cutscenes. Uh, Red Dire periodically, I can't pronounce that word right, checkups on Erwin. Nelly starts singing to her, and Raori was holding hands with Triana, who is alive, hoping, or is that maybe it's just a picture that they just threw in there for a happy ending? But man, it's a little. Little kid really died in this, huh? Mari died in G1. Rian died. Technically, truly died in G2. Is Triana gonna die in G3 and they're just gonna keep all these younger kids dying in every generation going forward? I don't know. But yeah, at the end, we got another vision from Morgan saying, I can't keep them at bay longer. I need your help. Uh, you're running out of time. We must defeat the Dark Knights with your power paladin. So everything is coming to an end. This will probably be the climax generation for G1 and G2. Because G1 felt like things ramping up and we got um, like an ending for it. But then G2 felt like it was setting up and connecting G1 with G3. And that G3 will be the, the climax of both genera all three generations coming together. So yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully it'll go well. But yeah, it was pretty fun. It was extremely short. Like, extremely short. Like, I finished it all in one day. Well, no, two days, because I got kind of lazy. And that also kind of over trimmed me episode two. But yeah. And my throat is going coarse. Is that, is that the right word for that? I'm not sure, but whatever. But yeah. Uh, also, next on Necromancy win. I I would love summoning classes. But yeah, that's it. G three will be helping uh, Morgan. And with that, G three part starts in a week or two, give or take, maybe a week. I'm not sure. We'll see what's happening at the current time. But yeah, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. I had a lot of fun. I hope you guys had a lot of fun. And with that, I love you guys. I'll see you guys later. Bye.